Hey guys, uh, this is Drew coming to you with a Bible study today. Um, today we're going to be reading from Isaiah, the ninth chapter. And I'd like to show you an amazing typolo typological prophecy that has to do with end time events. Starting in verse 1, it says, Nevertheless, the gloom will not be upon her who is distressed. As when the, at first he lightly esteemed the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward more heavily oppressed her by the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, in Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. You have multiplied the nation and increased its joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. Let me make a brief comment here. Isn't that exactly what the angel said? Um, rejoice, uh, for today a son has been given. Today a child is born. And when Jesus was born, the angels told the shepherds, to do this very thing. For you have broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. Jesus came to break the yoke of sin from our shoulder and to let the captives of sin go free, he tells us. For every warrior's sandal from the noisy battle and garments rolled in blood, when will be used for burning and fuel of fire. Now notice what the Bible here tells us this great light was. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. When studying the Bible, we always need to ask two questions, at least. Well, really three. Number one, how does this teach us about Christ? Number two, what does this teach us about end-time prophecy? How does this literal prophecy in miniature give us a picture of what's going to happen at the end of time in worldwide events? And number three, what does this have to do with me? Let's see what this has to do with Christ. Let's turn to Matthew and see if this is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. It says here in Matthew, let's see here, Matthew chapter 4, it says, starting in verse 13, And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is by the sea, in the regions of Zebulun and Naphtali. So, Already we know from the Old Testament prophecy before the Messiah came that the only Messiah that could fit must visit Zebulun and Naphtali. It tells us here that Jesus did visit these places. Verse 14, That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness, have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region of shadow and shadow of death, light has dawned. And it says, From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What does this have to do with us? It has everything to do with us. It if we see in Jesus the fulfillment of this prophecy, then our work is to repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Messiah has indeed come. 
It is Jesus of Nazareth. And if the Messiah has come, then what the Bible says is true, that we have all sinned and that judgment will come upon the unrepentant. But now mercy has come because Jesus has come. And while the offer of mercy is still available, let us seek Jesus even now. Let us repent and turn from our sins, turn to God, and live lives for him. Now let's see what Paul has to tell us about this great light. What is this great light? 2 Corinthians chapter 4. It says here, verse 3, But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. Is this talking about the verses we just read? Absolutely. We have light. We have Christ. We have all the same elements. Who is the image of God should shine upon them. So what was the light that was shown upon Nebulun or Zebulun and Naphtali? It was the light of the image of the glory of God the Father. Jesus called in the very chapter Isaiah that we read, the everlasting Father. He's called that because he who has seen Christ has seen the Father. Verse 5. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So what is this light that shined? It is the light of the character of the glory of God in Jesus Christ. Jesus came and revealed the love of God. He revealed who God really is. Now what does this have to do with end time prophecy? It has everything to do with end time prophecy. Let us go to Revelation chapter 18. The Bible tells us that at the end of time, when mystery Babylon is slaying God's servants, when mystery Babylon is taking over the world, and it seems that God's work is about to close, the Bible tells us that at that time, it says, After these things I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. In Revelation chapter 18, we see an angel filling the earth with the glory of God. And they proclaim the second angel's message of Revelation 14, along with the first angel, which is the gospel, and a call to fear God and give him glory because the hour of its judgment has come, and they call men to worship God instead of Babylon, the great harlot. And they give this powerful message, and what is the great glory in this message? The great glory is that just as Jesus came, and revealed the Father, so Jesus in the person of his people throughout the whole world, Jesus came to one locality, one small place, and in miniature he did the work that his people will do at the end of time. What did Jesus say in John chapter 17? Let me read it to you. Jesus said in John chapter 17, He tells us that we will do greater works than he did. I'm trying to find it here.
Indeed, Jesus does say, He says, I have sent them into the world just as he was sent into the world. And he will do greater work, and his people will do greater works than even he did. He says, I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You have given them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and known surely that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I have kept them in your name. Those whom you have given me I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves." I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Notice that the glory that Jesus had, he says he gives to his followers, and this is revealed in Revelation chapter 18 in its fullest glory. Revelation. And the glory which you have given me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me, and I have loved them, and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that you also, or that they also, whom you have, whom you gave me, may be with me where I am that they may behold my glory, which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. I have declared to them your name, and will declare it, that the love which you loved me, with which you loved me, may be in them, and I in them. Jesus sent his disciples and he sends them to do greater works than he did because his glory was revealed in a localized place but his disciples will fill the earth at the end of time and reveal his glory to every kindred, nation, tongue, and people. Is that your desire today? I pray that it is. Believe on Jesus, the only begotten Son of God, the true Messiah, be his disciple and reveal the Father's glory to a perishing world. Amen.